Hey everyone, it's Michael and Abby from For Fuel. Abby's our other rockstar awesome dietitian in our team. And today we're talking about how to avoid endocrine disruptors. Have you been feeling a little bit sluggish or fatigued, or maybe you've been told some of your labs are off, your thyroid is a little bit out of whack, you know, something's not right, and you're looking for some natural ways to stabilize these hormones. Well, today we're talking about how to avoid endocrine disruptors, and she has three awesome tips. So, let's dig in. Yes, so today we're gonna to be talking about the three top tips for avoiding endocrine disruptors. That's gonna be artificial sweeteners and refined sugars. It's gonna be the harmful effects of caffeine. And then number three is going to be how why it's important to purchase organic when you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm working with clients all the time, and it's crazy the amazing improvements we can see in hormonal balances when we look at the types of endocrine disruptors that are in our environment, our food, so many chemicals everywhere all the time and so we can really see a lot of improvements in this um, when we pay attention to them all right all right so let's dig into tip number one sugars you know how do they affect us everyone knows like sugar is not great for them but i don't think many people think about do sugars affect my hormones or artificial sweeteners i'll exactly. just i'll avoid sugar and i'll just have some artificial sweeteners and whatnot but it's not that straightforward and it can affect right. our hormones. So yeah. how does it affect us? Yeah, absolutely. So artificial sweeteners and added refined sugars are probably the, one of the top culprits for disrupting hormone balance, right? So we're not just talking about the red dye 40 that's in our Diet Coke or, you know, the sugar that's in our cupcakes, right? These, this, these sources of sugar are added to so many of our health foods without us even realizing it, right? So our beautiful salad dressings, our, our Greek yogurts that are so beautiful and perfect for, for getting sources of protein and things, they're loaded with added sugars, right? Um, you know, our beautiful trail mix, a lot of these things have added sugars in them. And then on the contrary, a lot of times we just wanna, oh, I'll just have an artificial sweetener. But the problem is, is that this is causing a lot of the same physiological responses that sugar is having itself, right? So replacing it with an artificial synthetic chemical isn't really doing the job, right? So these are things we need to be um, really paying attention to. So if you're waking up in the morning and the first thing you're gravitating to is your caramel macchiato or you know your, your cereal grain, this is really something that we wanna be paying attention to because you are literally allowing your blood sugar to go from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. And this really sets you up for the whole rest of the day, just a, a hormonal cascade of imbalances that are happening all throughout the day. So these are kind of some of the things we wanna be talking about in terms of sugar. Yeah, and we actually have a whole blog post on nine artificial sweetener side effects, and I can tell you uh, from my wife, our other dietitian on our team, that reading labels is one of the biggest things that I have learned right. because so often you don't realize how much sugar is thrown around in some different things because we get used to this sweetness and we, crazy. We, it doesn't even taste that sweet anymore when you've had enough of it. Exactly. So, I, so speaking of that response, right, this is the physiological, right, insulin uh, secretion that happens in response to sugar. When we eat sugar, we crave sugar more. And this disrupts not only the hormonal imbalances, but the gut that's, that is, you know, fueling a lot of these reactions in mm -hmm. communication, yeah. that is driving our hormonal imbalance as well, okay? Yeah. So these are things that are all impacted by sugar. Yeah, it's feeding the bad bugs, all kinds of bad stuff. So let's right. get into tip number two, caffeine. Unfortunately, I really can't have caffeine. Uh, I love so the sad. taste of coffee, but uh, I found out after years of just like crashing and burning that I actually don't metabolize it, and the DNA results confirm that. So yeah. it was like just fine, okay, this is why I don't uh, deal with it well, but, Caffeine, for a lot of people, it's a regular daily thing. We yep. love our coffee, we're obsessed with it. But how can caffeine affect our hormones? Can it be an endocrine disruptor? Right, yeah, so coffee everything. Everyone lives for coffee, but we gotta think about coffee in the context of how it can really, you know, drive hormonal imbalances in the body. And so, you know, every day it seems a new claim is made about the health benefits of coffee and how, you know, it can support performance and even have other health benefits. And we know that there's research to support this. We know that there is a benefit to coffee at times, but just like with all things nutrition, right? What works for someone is not always gonna work for another person. And when it comes to hormone imbalances and a person that is, you know, really, really stressed, pounding coffee all day and just living and fueling off of, you know, three, four or five cups of coffee all day, um, you just kind of think about how this is really driving a lot of hormonal imbalance. So how is this happening? 
Cortisol, right? Cortisol is the mother of all stress hormones in our body. I'm sure we all, you know, this word is thrown around all the time. Um, but, you know, in response to drinking a lot of coffee, we have a huge cortisol response that's happening. And cortisol is really, you know, impeding the body's ability to effectively burn fat, lose weight, um, you know, not to mention the jitteriness or inability to sleep that really is caused as a result of, you know, sust um, sustained cortisol all throughout the day. Just lots of cortisol spikes. Yeah. Yeah. That is not going to make you feel very good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, let's get to tip number three, organic versus non-organic doesn't matter you probably know the answer to that if you're looking at this video but yeah. we do have a whole blog post on we talk about the difference in farming practices for organic versus non-organic whether it's livestock or it's crops but Absolutely. let's talk about how does it affect our hormones how do different crops or how do different things that are organic versus non-organic affect our endocrine system yes yeah, so Number three, how to avoid our endocrine disruptors is really purchasing organic produce and meat when we can and why this is so important. So as Michael mentioned, you know, there's a million reasons why we need to pay attention to our farming practices now. And purchasing organic, we know better than anyone, doing all day everything we're buying can break the bank, you know, it, it can be really expensive. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about the benefit to really prioritizing high quality meat and high quality protein, pro protein sources, it's because of all the synthetic chemicals and pesticides that are just stuffed into all of our meat and, and produce these days. And so, um, you know, when you think about, you know, reducing the packaged and processed foods in your diet, you leave a little space in your diet, hopefully, to spend the extra two, three dollars on your grass fed organic ground beef versus your farm raised. And hopefully, you know, after reading, you know, our blog posts and learning more information about this, you realize that you're actually doing a lot more. Um, you know, beneficial things for your body, spending the extra few dollars on the organic meat and produce when you can, um, because it just really is worth it in that way because of the harmful effects and endocrine disrupting chemicals that are in a lot of these foods. Um, so that's really gonna be important. One of the top things I'm always talking about with my clients is prioritizing what produce that you're spending your organic dollars on, right? So mm -hmm. the Clean 15 um, and the Dirty Dozen, which are lists that are continuously being updated by the environmental working group, um, they're providing you know consistent updates of the top 15 uh, sources of produce that are really pretty clean in terms of chemicals, you pesticides. Might, you might be able to get away with buying it uh, non organic, right? If you don't right, have the option. exactly. And then the dirty dozen, which are you know, our top, lots of leafy greens, our berries, things that are just ridden they, with lots they tend of to be covered. Yeah, you yeah. think about some things like a banana that has a skin that might be a little more protected, exactly. more often tends to be on the clean list versus you know, as you exactly. said, the greens tend to be on the dirty list, but they do update it every year so we exactly. know because farming practices change yeah so this is just one you know really tangible piece of advice that i like to give with uh to my clients to really you know kind of help maximize purchasing organic produce and giving a little more guidance on what what to buy organic what to not so this yeah. is a really tangible piece of advice that i like to use i'm all about being frugal for yes. life I, I really like that i did have a patient one time said you know, I, I choose, I can choose to either pay my pharmacist or my farmer, and I choose to pay my farmer. So That's I was right. like, that, that, in your health. that really stuck with me. So yeah. I'd, I'd rather be paying a little bit extra on my produce than some extra Absolutely. medications. Right. So we have a really awesome blog post that really outlines all this. Yeah. It digs more into detail, it has uh, more information. So check that out, it's uh, titled, Seven Chemicals and Foods That Cause Hormonal Imbalance. I'll have that in the show notes, yes. along with our blog post about organic versus non-organic and nine artificial, nine artificial sweeteners. So right. I'll, I'll check, check all that out, I'll have that in the show notes. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up, subscribe so we can share our videos with yes. you and let you know when we have new ones available. Uh, share with your friends so we can grow this channel and help other people. And check us out on our blog, forfuel.com. That's F-W-D, F-U-E-L.com. Check us out on Instagram. What is your Instagram handle? Abby, A-B-B-Y underscore Vigil is my Instagram. And then also we have our Forward Fuel Instagram account, account which is F-W-D Fuel. All right, that's all for now. Yes. See ya. Awesome, thanks guys.